The goal of this video is to examine the area enclosed by a polar curve. So the statement of the problem is this. We've got some polar curve and we want to find the area enclosed between the origin and the curve. So let's be clear about what we mean by that. If you start at the origin and march out to meet the curve in all possible directions, then that's, that's the region we intend to find the area of. Now, we know how to answer this question in Cartesian coordinates. We have an integral formula that gives us area. But we have to be a little careful about that because it's not just area. Really what's going on there is any region that appears above the x-axis is counting positively. Any area that shows up below the x-axis is counting negatively. So in fact what we're doing is we're finding signed area between the x-axis and the graph of f. That's really what we mean when we say area under the curve. Now this is hopelessly Cartesian. I mean, I suppose we could try to convert the polar curve into Cartesian coordinates and somehow apply this integration, but it's going to be a big mess usually. So the real issue here is can we do this, uh, an analogous process on the left, in terms of theta? Can we find this area in terms of theta? And also, a question we hadn't imagined, perhaps, at the beginning, is this area going to be signed in any sense? Is there going to be something that counts negatively? So we'll keep our eye on that question as well. So first, let's come up with a sector approximation. What we'll do is we'll take a, a piece of the polar curve, and we'll take successive points that are relatively close, and ask, what is this little bit of area? We can call delta delta A. Um, what is the, this, this area here? And let's put in um, circles around the origin so we can see constant values of r. And what we will do is call this delta theta. This is going to be the difference in the theta coordinate between these two points. And we'll identify this little sector of the inner circle. And now we'll call that coordinate r the uh, radial component of the first point. And now we're set to make an observation. If delta theta is pretty small, then the blue area we wanted to approximate in the first place should be approximately equal to the green area of the sector. Now, in fact, this picture does not have a small delta theta, so it doesn't perhaps look all that close. But generally, we hope that delta A is going to be approximately equal to 1 half r squared delta theta, which is the area formula for the sector of a circle of radius r and um, angular width delta theta. So let's take that sector approximation and we'll take a polar curve and theta starts and ends somewhere and we're going to divide that theta interval up into say five divisions. What'll happen? We'll have these various theta equally spread. Let's call these arguments theta 1 through theta 5 and we'll apply the sector approximation to each of these regions and add up all the contributions and that'll be our approximation for the area. Now you could do that with any number of divisions so the more divisions you use the finer the approximation and we'll notice that both of these are examples of Riemann sums and as you divide the interval into more and more pieces you're going to get an integral and the integral is one half the integral from theta start to theta finish of r squared d theta and that's going to give us this area between the origin and the curve so we have our answer to the question what's the area enclosed we have a, an integral formula that gives us the area enclosed is it possible to calculate in terms of theta? Sure, everything in that boxed formula is in terms of theta. R is given up to us in terms of theta, presumably. So the answer is yes. And is the area calculated, is that going to be signed in any sense? And we'll notice even in the picture on the left, R is negative, but the integral is of R squared. So we're always accumulating some non-negative contribution. So because the integrand is always non-negative, in fact, there's no negative contributions ever, so we, every time we integrate, we're going to be contributing positively, so there's no signed area. Now, this, is, this can cause a problem, as we'll see with examples later. 
So let's look at an example. Um, let's start with a simple one where we know the answer already. The polar curve is r equals 3, and we're going to run theta from 0 to 2 pi. Now we already know the answer to this question because the area of a circle is simply pi times the radius squared. So this answer's got to be 9 pi. Now let's look at it in terms of a polar curve. Theta runs from 0 to 2 pi, so we're going to sweep out the circle. And we're going to look at our template formula and plug in the information in this example. So this is simply going to be the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 9 d theta, 1 half times that. And um, this is a very easy integration, and not shockingly, it gives us 9 pi. So the formula works, as we would hope it would. And um, let's take uh, another example where we already know the answer. 2 secant theta. r equals 2 secant theta. Theta runs from 0 to pi over 3. What does this curve look like? Well, if you wrote r equals 2 secant theta and then multiply both sides by cosine theta, and notice that r cosine theta is actually x, what you have here is a part of the vertical line x equals 2. So when theta is 0 and theta is pi over 3, you're going to get that segment right there, and we're trying to find the area between the origin and that segment. So we're finding the area of a triangle. And better yet, pi over 3 is 60 degrees, so you can use some basic geometry to calculate that the area in question turns out to just be 2 root 3. So we already know the answer. What does our integral formula tell us? We need to evaluate this. Let's plug in the appropriate information, 0 to pi over 3 for the limits. 4 secant squared is our integrand. And the good news here is secant squared has an antiderivative of tan theta. So when all the dust settles, you realize that indeed you get 2 root 3 for your area. So this integral formula seems to be working where we already know the answers. Finally, um, let's do this less trivial example. Find the area enclosed by one petal of r equals 3 cosine 3 theta. Now, you can figure out that uh, going from negative pi over 6 to pi over 6 for your theta will do the trick to get one petal. Now, so we could integrate that way. But uh, I strongly urge you, whenever possible, to use symmetry to cut down your calculation. So let's just go from 0 to pi over 6 and double the result, in which case we're looking at that integral right there. Now we're going to make a substitution, let u be 3 theta. And we'll get new limits of integration, and we'll replace all of that data, and here's your new integral, cosine squared from 0 to pi over 2. This is one of those integrals where you do not have to work hard. Cosine squared is a miniature sinusoidal function of period pi, and you can exploit that symmetry to find areas over certain intervals. If you want to go from 0 to pi over 2, the area of that rectangle is simply pi over 2, so half that is pi over 4. So the integral in question here is pi over 4, which means the expression is 3 times pi over 4, about 2.3562. Um, let's see if that's plausible in this picture. We're looking at that pedal, and we'll notice that if you put three unit boxes around the whole thing, it's pretty clear that the area is probably going to be less than three, and if you put two boxes in, it's plausible to think the area is greater than two, so yes, 2.3562 does appear to be in the right ballpark.